Hey, Salvador Braven here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demons Fight YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding Kickstarter Indigo. And specifically today, we're getting to some of the Kickstarter tricks and tips which you can employ into your upcoming campaigns. If you're a creator, if you're an innovator, if you're someone to come out with a new idea or a new product, I think you're gonna like today's video when it comes to some of the things that are just gonna help you and also speed up the process for making sure that you get more funded in less time. And in addition, you know, I love to help creators. I love to put out information and advice to help people when it comes to the different stages of the process. I think that also, it's so important to just be aware of the different things that are available in your arsenal when it comes to crowdfunding and that's why I wanted to make today's YouTube video. Okay, so let's get started. Again, my name is Sal and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time, uh, I love to talk about crowdfunding and one of the things that's so important to me is to empower you to bring your ideas, to bring your thoughts, to bring, take these things that are in your head and make this into reality. Whether that's a physical product, a card game, a board game, if that's something like an indie publishing project, if it's a new gadget or a gizmo, a design product, whatever it is, we try to empower you on this channel so that you can go out there, you can actually follow in a step-by-step -step fashion the advice that we teach so that you can actually go out there, you can raise funds, you can get a ton of people excited about this new idea, this new product, and also I think have validation. Right? So it's really my mission to help you unlock your potential as it relates to this. And kind of the cool way, in my opinion, that I love and why I'm so passionate about this is that it also impacts the world to a small degree. Because then other people go out there, they buy your products, you can see a product in the wild, you have other people using this and benefiting from it in so many ways. So let's get to the first trick which I wanna share in today's video. The first one that I have for you is that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta use Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and to really try and create an event around launching a new campaign. So why do I talk about this? The reason why this is so important is that when you're trying to get someone to take action, there is nothing like the present. There is nothing like the now, right? When you're trying to get someone to take action, it's so much easier to do it when you're with them in real time. Because all of a sudden, you can direct their focus, you can direct their attention, versus if you just tell them to do something, it's like you gotta hope that later they're gonna remember to actually do that thing or they're going to later recall that information and they're going to take action on that or they're not going to get distracted with the latest Netflix thing or the next XBO thing or whatever it is that they're watching, right? They're not going to get distracted and they're actually going to do what you ask them to. So when you're doing a Facebook Live or Instagram Live or you have people in a live stream in some fashion or you have them in a physical setting when you're doing a launch event, it makes it so easy because you have their attention, right? You have their focus and you can also answer many of the common questions that come up when it comes to running a crowdfunding campaign, asking like, why are you serious about this really? Or what can have you done before? How does this whole Kickstarter thing work? How does this whole Indiegogo thing work, right? Really can answer a lot of questions. So number one is make sure you do a launch event of some kind in order to make sure that you have people show up on that day one of your launch. Number two is early bird rewards and incorporating early bird rewards into your campaign. So some of you might already know what early bird rewards are, some of you might not, but really I think that early bird rewards are an incredible way to incentivize people who are on the fence to actually take action when you go live on launch day. And in addition, there are different types of early bird rewards. So for example, you could do a time-based reward on Kickstarter, you could do a limited quantity reward on Kickstarter. Um, you could also have a secret perk if you're doing something like an Indiegogo campaign. So a lot of different ways in which you can do early bird rewards, basically these are just designed for the people that get there first. So they got there, right? They actually showed up at the page. They can take advantage of this incredible special offer when it comes to your Kickstarter campaign. So that could be, for example, 40% off, 30% off, 25% off, whatever it is you're offering off of MSRP. In addition, that limited quantity factor is something that gets just people excited because it's like, oh my gosh, there's only a couple of these left, right? So they're more likely to take action, that fear of missing out. And also the time-based rewards encourage a lot of urgency. Maybe you have a reward that's only available for four eight hours or 72 hours or something like that. So you can use these early bird rewards to kind of tick some of those different boxes. And you can also, if I, I really recommend, go and listen to the episodes on my podcast to discover how other creators are also using early bird rewards. So I've got a ton of different podcasts out there. I have one on YouTube. I publish a version on Spotify, on iTunes. Sort of my latest versions are on my website, crowdcrux.com. So you can go there. You can listen to other people that are doing this, that are employing these tactics and even more in order to get their campaign funded from many different backgrounds. Some of them have launched one campaign. Some of them have never launched a campaign. Other people have launched like 20 campaigns and they came on the show and talk about the way that they approach a launch. So make sure you listen to the podcast and early bird rewards are definitely a hallmark of all the guests that I had on. 
The next one in my list is to make sure, make sure, make sure that you're using the latest social media platforms. And by that, I specifically mean TikTok. Now, I know when I say TikTok, you guys are like, roll your eyes, you're like, Sal, really, TikTok? Aren't those like 18 year olds using that platform? Well, hear me out here because I am very similar to you. I'm such a busy guy and I'm sure you're really busy as well. You don't have time to go and look at the latest gossip, right? You don't have time to always check up on everyone that you've known in the entire course of your life on Instagram or Facebook or whatever platform, right? you don't have time necessarily. And maybe you don't even like it. You don't even like using social media personally because the data they collect, right? However, when it comes to business, this is a no brainer because it's free marketing, it's free traffic, right? It's free money that you're saying no to if you don't use these social media platforms to broadcast your message about your product, your cause, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So one of the things that I think that's so important is to make sure that you're using the latest platforms, whether that's Instagram, whether that's uh, using Facebook, whether that's doing story posts, right? Whether that's doing things even on YouTube, for example, with Reels or Instagram Reels, or even using TikTok, I think that you really gotta make sure that you're using the latest cutting edge platforms out there to spread your message. I'm telling you, I had an incredible, incredible podcast interview that I did with these guys from Pluffle. Now, Pluffle is a dog bed for humans, okay? So these college students had this wacky, crazy idea and kind of in like the crowd crux or crowdfunding demystified fashion, they just went out there and they executed it and they did it. And I love that. That's exactly why I tell you guys, you got to execute, you got to take action, you got to go out there and you got to try to achieve success, achieve your dreams and make real, you know, actions towards that and absorb information and really just be willing to, you know, to put everything on the line for something you believe in, you call, you care about. So these guys, they invented this dog with bed for humans and they decided to put this out there and they really just had some, initially some sketches, they eventually got a prototype together. They started to put out some videos on TikTok and they never used TikTok before. You know, this is the first time they were doing it and it really just feels like a month, a two month. They're on the platform, they're putting out some videos and boom, they had a video go viral. So by viral, I'm not talking about thousand views or thousands of views, even or hundreds of thousands of views. I'm talking about millions of views that they got on their TikTok video. And again, this is for a dog bed for humans, which is kind of like a novelty product as well. It has that X factor when it comes to Kickstarter. So this video and other videos that they put out there on TikTok went viral, had insane levels of comments and people and interacting. They built up a rock solid list of people that were excited to buy this product. And then they actually launched this Kickstarter campaign and had a successfully funded six figure Kickstarter campaign and I documented this all on my podcast. So this really works and you have to be a little bit proactive, you have to be willing to put yourself out there, but I do think that social media is a trick, particularly when it comes to the new platforms nowadays and how that can actually funnel into a new campaign. So make sure you are using that. The next item is actually something that's more of a trick once you've actually been successfully funded. So a lot of times we have coaching students, we have people who come to me and they're like, hey Sal, you know, I'm trying to do a campaign and I wanna do maybe a small campaign, a 30 day campaign. And usually what I recommend doing is, you know, obviously if you wanna kind of cut, cut your teeth on crowdfunding, that's great and you can also do a small campaign you can do another campaign another campaign but for people out there that are really investing a lot of time and energy into doing a project what i say is hey if you're putting so much time and energy into making a product getting sketches getting models getting cad designs you're getting something out there right you're doing video you're doing photos you're, you're doing the work so put it on a whole production right when it comes to this campaign you're building up an audience right you're announcing this to the world you're building your brand you're getting tons of traffic if you're doing all of that why not swing for the fences man right so you can actually do what's longer than a 30 day campaign. You can actually transition into Indigo in demand. You can use the pledge manager tool. You could afterwards use Spotlight, which is the trick I'm mentioning right now. You can use Spotlight in order to direct traffic to, for example, an email list or to a Shopify store or something like that. But this trick of using Spotlight in order to direct attention and traffic is a hallmark of most successful campaigns. And the reason why is that when you're doing a campaign and you follow what I talk about in my book, the Kickstarter launch formula, when you grab a copy of that book on Audible, uh, Amazon paperback, people say they are blown away by just how easy this process is. And one of the things I talk about there is that once you build momentum, momentum is kind of like this resource, if you will. And when you build up momentum, all of a sudden you have a massive resource, which is momentum. And the cool thing about this is like, it actually spills into future things that you're announcing. You can do multiple campaigns, and as well, within the exact same campaign, people, you'll find people that are Googling your name out there. there. You'll find people that are trying to search you up on social media. You'll find people who are still trying to get in the doors after you've closed them when it comes to the crowdfunding campaign. So you can actually use Spotlight, this feature, in order to direct traffic once a campaign is done to Indigo In Demand, where you can keep raising money. I've had clients and students who literally double the amount of money which they have raised crazy using Indigo in demand, same with pledge manager tools, same with using Shopify or a pre-order system of some kind, or even just building an 
email list of people that were interested on getting in on the actual campaign. And then you can announce it again to them once you're able to then ship to them or you open up your e-commerce store. So make sure you use Spotlight. That is my next trick. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. The next one is to engage in cross promotions with other live campaigns. So I'm talking about other live campaigns on Kickstarter. I'm talking about other live campaigns when it comes to Indiegogo. You can actually cross promote with these other campaigns. It's almost like cross pollination of audiences. So you can, for example, be doing an update of some kind on your Kickstarter campaign. They can be doing an update at the same time and you guys can kind of cross promote each other. Or you could do like an email marketing campaign where you guys are both promoting each other that way. Or it could be social media, right? So a lot of different ways in which you can do cross promotion. But one of the things I will say, well, actually I say two really important things. One is you definitely want to make sure that you're picking a really good partner. So you don't wanna have a campaign, for example, where it's like you have a bunch of followers and backers and they only have a few, right? It's just not gonna be a good synergy. It's not gonna be a good win-win relationship. And win-win relationships are kind of like the bedrock of my business philosophy, my life philosophy, when it comes to crowdfunding. I think that relationships should be win-win and it's just no reason why not, right? So it's good for both parties. So the other thing would be when you're doing this, you also don't wanna do a cross promotion with a competing product of some kind. And here's why. I've seen campaigns where they do that and unfortunately, whosoever product is superior, a lot of the times the audience just kind of gravitates to that other product. And that might actually mean that the, the person actually sees a decrease in their funding when it comes to that because other people shift to this other campaign. So make sure that if you're doing cross promotion, number one, really smart about picking those partners. And number two, that you're not doing it with a competing product, but one that's more complementary in nature. And you do have a similar audience cross-pollination or crossover when it comes to those demographics. The next trick, which is actually used by so many campaigns, and I think a very underutilized um, item, if you will, or a very underutilized strategy when it comes to crowdfunding, which is that you can actually release new reward tiers while you are live on Kickstarter, right? So this is really interesting and really cool. And kind of what I'm talking about coaching students are always like, Sal, I didn't even know you could do that. And also, like, I always thought when you launch, you're kind of like locked in. You're like, you're locked in loaded, right? When it comes to the launch. But in reality, actually, when you launch a campaign, you can have a very dynamic campaign page and you can be changing things around on the campaign page as you go on the fly and adding things in or taking things out. And it's actually really fluid of a campaign page in that way. In addition, same thing goes with rewards. So you can only edit a reward that hasn't yet been pledged to, right? So if someone's actually back to the campaign and pledged a certain reward, you can't edit that reward here, right? You could have it sell out and you could release a new reward if you want to on Kickstarter. But one of the things you can do is you can announce and you can release a whole new reward tier. So when it comes to this, I've seen many campaigns do this. A great example of this, I think, is the Reading Rainbow campaign. I mean, they had a really crazy, insane strategy when it comes to that smash uh, crowdfunding success, right? In the, in the halls of history when it comes to crowdfunding. So I think this is a really interesting strategy, a really great trick that my opinion know about. It's also an easy way which can increase people to, or incentivize people to move down the reward tier so they actually back at higher levels, which overall increases the amount of money which you've raised on Kickstarter. The other thing I would say is, you know, in addition to increasing the amount of money that you've raised on Kickstarter, it's also a really cool way just to have inventory. So the more inventory you have, the more that people can pick from, and maybe they didn't see an option which they liked before, and now they do. I also had a coaching student man who actually hired me for two different campaigns. His last campaign was over 600K, and he ended up doing this exact same stretch. So this works as a really interesting trick, recommend including it if it makes sense in your strategy. The last tip that I'm gonna mention on today's video, the last trick, if you will, is that what happens when someone actually comes to the campaign, right? And thinking a little bit about the, the pre-frame, if you will, before someone actually comes to the campaign. The reason why this is a trick is that what if you had one person, person A and person B, and person A shows up the campaign and they back it instantly. Person B shows up the campaign and they don't. They wait around, maybe they decide to go and do something else, or they kind of lose interest or lose intention, and all of a sudden, you don't no longer have a backer, right? And your conversion rates begin to go down. You have less people that are backing it when you first announce this product. So what's the difference between person A and person B. The only difference, if they've been you know, subject to the exact same product, is the marketing. And when it comes to the marketing, my gosh, the easiest thing that you can do is to give people all of the information or most of the information that they need to make a decision before you go live. And why that's so important, man? Why is that so important? That's important because all those little questions that you might have before you buy a product, they can get answered before they actually show up. So once they show up to the campaign, that's all answered in their head, they have no more questions 
actions and they can take action, right? So something might be holding them back. For example, they don't know what the materials are of the product. They don't know the specs or the dimension. And one of their frequently asked questions was not answered. They don't know what this Kickstarter thing is that you even drew their attention to. They don't know how the platform works. They don't know why you're doing it. You don't even know anything about when you're gonna actually fulfill these rewards. So the more information that you can kind of have seep into that person's mind and they understand all this when you go live, it makes them take action much faster because they don't longer have any more questions. They already have all this information available. They already know about Kickstarter. They already have a sense of how this works and thus they can immediately take action. So my next trick is to really try to bake this into the pre-launch, really try to bake this into your launch sequence, if you will. And this is something that I talk about all the time with my coaching students. So I do these intensive one-on-one -on -one consultations or coaching sessions that oftentimes honestly also lead into long-term coaching. A lot of times also lead to me helping with different campaigns sometimes even working one-on-one -on -one with a creator to help them launch campaigns. And it's kind of gonna vary, right? There's a lot that's on my plate nowadays, but if you feel like you are serious about this campaign, if you feel like you're serious and you want a complete strategy when it comes to your launch, if you're really trying to do something big, right? You really wanna be successful. And in addition, you kind of want your hand held to a degree leading through this process. And you don't wanna just go and hunt through lots and lots of information. You'd rather just have someone be like, this is a good idea, this isn't a good idea. You should do this, you should do this, get feedback, etc. Go and check out my link for booking a one-on-one -on -one coaching call down below. In addition, I got a free newsletter, which I put out weekly, sharing with you the top cutting edge tips when it comes to crowdfunding. I call it the killer crowdfunding tips. So you can also join my newsletter at crowdcrux.com slash newsletter. I will include a link for that one as well down below. But man, I hope you've enjoyed some of these tricks and tips. I hope that you enjoy my channel. Give me some love, show me some love by giving me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and also come subscribe if you want more content like this.